it's time for That Was The Woke That Was with Andre Walker. Hello and welcome to That Was The Woke That Was, the topical quiz show that goes through all of the wokest stories of the week and I guarantee absolutely no snowflakes allowed. On my team tonight, I've got Anna McGovern and Lacey Butcher and Ben Lochnane and the lovely, the beautiful Pete Barnes. Let's get this party started. So, okay, to Ben and to Pete. Meghan Markle's nephew is selling a special kind of cannabis grown on his farm in Oregon. It's called Markle Sparkle and is $150 an ounce. It's dedicated to his aunt. Oh. Is it true or false? Is there a single normal person in that family? <laughs> <laughs> like, no. What a tribute. Like, these stories just get more bizarre and more bizarre every time I come on this show. <laughs> it's absolutely unreal. But um, this honestly wouldn't surprise me if it's true. It surprise me. I mean, well, I you've mean, got to trade off the name. Yeah. She's made a name for herself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's quite funny how low-grade his level of trading off is. He hasn't gone to the press. He hasn't tried to become a celebrity. He's just thought, I could sell some weed yeah. off this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's genius, actually, isn't it? It's like Ray Kroc when he decided that he'd sell more milkshakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He founded the McDonald's group. And you're like, you've got that slightly wrong. Mm. But anyway, the one thing I was going to ask you, Lacey, look, mm. you know, members of the Meghan Markle family... Brigade. Think, Brigade. <laughs> the clan. The yeah. Yeah. clan. Oh, oh. They, they think that um, they could name a weed after her that mm. is overly expensive and sends you a bit nuts. Well, how, why would that work? Well, £150 for an ounce isn't actually that expensive. It's pretty, it? pretty No, she doesn't know. No, that's, that's pretty much half price for, for normal things. So it's, it's actually a really, really extortionately cheap product. But I, I like Markle Sparkle. I, I, oh, in what way is weed in any way glittery or, or do not, glistening? Do you, not, do you not think we've established that when you legalise cannabis, the price goes down? Yeah. yeah. But, but look, you know, this family are just people who just trade off whatever they can. Mm. They're just big show-offs. You get the impression, Anna, that they're just mm. dysfunctional. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they're trying to make money as much as they can by, you know, say they don't want a public persona, a public profile, and then selling their story to the press every time they can. And I think you just see this as an opportunity. You know, they've done the same, so why can't he? But how many people... I mean, I think you made this point. How many people think, right, <laughs> my aunt has become a British duchess, she's married uh, the future king's mm. brother... I think what I need to do is launch a range of cannabis. <laughs> I mean, like, what was the thought process? <laughs> Mind you, the thought process was probably affected by the yeah, cannabis. Say, was yeah. He was probably sat there yeah. going, yeah, man, this sounds like a great <laughs> yeah, idea. Yeah, like a great <laughs> idea. Everyone's going, everyone's going, pal, this is just a bad idea. Yeah. Don't do this. But, but I thought you raised an interesting point where you said uh, when you legalise it, you uh, lower the price of it, because I think this is Illinois where, the, where, the, where his brother's lives or something like that and it's like kind of like the new gold rush in america mm. Mm. like the amount of money that you can make through like legalized and mm. uh, medical and recreational marijuana is astronomical i think it's like 33 billion dollars or something like that now wow. it's absolutely do astounding you know, do, you, do you know what makes me depressed about the duke of wigan pete barnes <laughs> the fact that he researched the size of the u.s <laughs> market before I coming on the show I you're not one did. sad individual <laughs> not one sad. i mean i get criticized for making jokes about pies <laughs> but at least i don't know what the cannabis market is in the United States. Uh, I, I believe it's approximately 33 billion. <laughs> it's not approximate, is it? You literally Googled that. Yeah, it's also, I think it's in 2026, it goes up to 53 billion. I also know that. <laughs> Right, OK, whichever way you answer this, you're already on minus five points. <laughs> right. So, come on, come on. Is it true or false that Meghan Markle's nephew is selling a special type of weed from his farm in Oregon, Markle Sparkle, $150 an ounce. Yes, it's true. true. It's true. It's absolutely true! <laughs> minus, <laughs> minus 44 points. Sam Smith, who we love on this show, yeah. mm -hmm. caused controversy at the Brits this week after dressing as a Chinese spy balloon. Now, the slight problem is with this, I don't know whether this question's true or false. <laughs> <laughs> They, th there's an answer down on my sheet, yeah. but I'm not sure. Well, it'd be an interesting spy balloon because I'm sure we've all seen the photos now of that. Everywhere. Ridiculous <laughs> outfit. And I have no idea what he was trying to suggest or promote by doing this. I think it's just another look at me. I'm doing something yeah. different. Uh, you, one, wanting it, his 50 minutes of, of fame Lacey, for the week. But Lacey, yeah. if you are slightly overweight, and I appreciate I might be a bit of a hypocrite it on this, but if you are slightly overweight, why dress like the Michelin man? I mean, wouldn't you go for something <laughs> slimming? Like, maybe maybe horizontal stripes? Well, the thing, mm. the, sorry, the thing is, it, it's somewhat of a cheap knockoff of David Bowie, because mm. uh, the picture mm. went round, was it during the 80s, I think, when he had those giant inflatable um, trousers on? It's like, it's not new. It wasn't. Uh, it, was, it was MC Hammer. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it looked like MC Hammer. Yes, yeah, so you got that 
what Sam... This is what annoys me the most about when people talk about Sam Smith. They're talking about it as though it's like a new thing. Yeah. It's not. It's a cheap knockoff repackaged to sell to people that don't know there was a music industry before 2010. We've got a clip from the Brit Awards of Sam Smith performing. Take it away, Sam. <laughs> 99 red balloons floating in the summer sky. Panic bells, it's red alert. There's something here from somewhere else. The war machine springs to life. Open up one eager eye, focusing it on the sky. 99 black balloons go by. I have to say, last time I saw something that white and flabby, it was fried in batter and served at my chippy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, look, uh, Sam Smith, has he caused controversy uh, at the Brits by dressing as a Chinese spy balloon? True or false? Uh, I don't uh, think it's a, I don't think it's a balloon. I think that's the thing that's false about it. Yeah? Yeah. It was okay. it, yeah. yeah I mean, unless that's, it's a very odd balloon Is shape. Or I just saw it all over Twitter, social media over the weekend. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll but, go with you, whatever you but, want. False. False. It is absolutely false! Yay. 26 points. Now you're on minus 48. <laughs> 53, yeah. actually. Let's just let's just round it down. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Church of England has said it's considering making God gender neutral. Yeah. This is a bit weird, this one, yeah. because you know it's the Church one, of England what, a bit weird. But it's, yeah. But, yeah, but it's one of the one of the things like you have to go through the Bible and change every single instance of father, he, yeah. him. You know who's going to do that job? I wouldn't want to have to go through the yeah. entire reckon, Bible and change every reckon, pronoun. Do you reckon uh, like uh, God and Mary are parent one and parent two? Yeah. yeah. How, do, how does Joseph yeah. fit in? Like he's parent the adoptive three? parent. They're polyamorous, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. It's like, a like like God was Jesus' birth father. Yeah. yeah. The adopted yeah. one was I, Joseph. I think you make a good point there. It's like where where do we draw like. Where do we draw the line here? Are they just stopping with God? That we're going to make it gender neutral? Or are we going to, like you said, are we going to have parent one, parent two? Because that's more inclusive. Because that's the point of it, isn't it? It's mm. to make it more inclusive. I don't really understand this idea that if they suddenly change the pronouns of God, people are going to come flocking back to the Church of England. Yeah. I don't I don't understand that logic well, at Yeah, that's, all, that's but... absolutely right. You're just thinking, do you know what? I really don't believe in Christianity. Yeah. I think it's a load of old bunker. Mm. There was no census. Uh, at the time of Jesus' birth. You know, Herod may not have existed. Oh, gender neutral God. Yeah, get down there. Yeah. Let's get down to the let's get down to the uh, the local. It just reminds church. me of those like decisions made by committee. Yeah. You know, <laughs> where it was also around thinking, yeah. this is a great idea. And, and about, there's just one person there going, This is terrible, but I'm not saying anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think most of them were thinking this is terrible, yeah. I don't want to say anything. No one's put their head above the parapet. It takes one person to suggest something yeah. stupid. The thing, I suppose this comes on the, uh, off the back of the uh, Church of England voting against same sex. Marriages, mm. didn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I just wonder if this was a kind of, um, kind of like a kind of like distraction yeah. away from it, because um, they were allowed to do blessings now. I think yeah. again, it's not really my th thing. I don't really know much about this kind of stories, but it's it does seem to be a very kind of look over here, look at this shiny thing. Yeah. Don't look at this thing over here. I, I actually disagree because I think as well that I think that the, these upper forces they're taking over the church, and when you see stuff like this, you kind of you're sort of convinced like they don't believe in God, they don't believe in the Bible, yeah. and it's just that these ideologies are now fringing on religion on the church like I went um, I went into this Catholic church the other day in my local area and they had a big like LGBT uh, flag hung up with the uh, BLM side and it's not about religion anymore it's about the ideology that's taking over and but, I think yeah. it's just going to keep getting worse but and I, worse but I, but, I, but I just worry that in reality look I, I don't go to church but I worry that there's a huge number of people who just sort of become bishops become vicars, really just because they've got nothing better to do. I mean, my, my parents lived next door to a rectory, and basically, the guy left the army, didn't yeah. know what to do, and decided to become a vicar. And you just, you never got the sense he was particularly interested in God. Mm. No, exactly. Yeah. And the, it's like they're trying to change the doctrine and, you know, the teachings of the Bible. And I think this the problem is just going to keep progressing even more. They'll find something else that they have a problem with. More people find something else in the Bible. It'll become offensive, and it'll just keep getting, you know, trans... 
grassing into this even bigger problem. I've just, I've just realised something. You're like our equivalent of one of those like blonde American <laughs> evangelists. <laughs> oh. Kicking off, going, yeah. going these people <laughs> are the it. enemy of God. <laughs> I'm going to stop them from the behaviour they're Give having. Stand, I don't <laughs> like it very much. <laughs> These people have gone against Jesus. It's a serious problem, I, I think that's what I think this could be a, a very dangerous catalyst. I think it could yeah. be a start of a domino effect of things mm. that to come. Because once you go past this point, God knows what else they're going to find yeah. unacceptable. Yeah. But also, I'd just like to add, I think it's awful that you're describing Mary and Joseph as parents when they're clearly guardians. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's just be very clear on that. Um, but no, I, I think this is the start of something potentially quite dangerous and scary and, frankly, but unnecessary. One of yeah, the but spokes... No, but one of nobody the... goes to the Church of England, do they? But I mean, they if do. Talking... Well, I think that's but what it do. is, because no-one goes. They've looked at the woke people. And have yeah. They're basically a religious group as well. Yeah. They're absolutely insane. <laughs> they're unforgiving. They, you know, have a mob. Why don't we just become a religion for those people? Yeah. And then they might. They come don't believe in, in God and, anymore. Yeah. Well, I, I, in I a way, I can kind of understand one, that. <laughs> one of the spokespersons said, you know, the reason why this came Sorry, about. So one of the spokes what? Spokes. <laughs> spokesperson. Spokes one of the spokesmen or spokeswomen. <laughs> One I can't spokes... believe this. Literally, you are you are having a go no. at gender-neutral titles. Go, the spokesperson <laughs> said, oh, well done. Well done, just blowing away your own argument. Well, there. the spokespeople uh, <laughs> come out and say that, you know, obviously God is more than male and female. And that's... I understand that point. I don't think anyone would dispute that. No-one's degrading it to, you know, someone's yeah. genitalia. But then to extrapolate it to this point where we're going to be auto-correcting everything else, I think is a disgrace. Yeah. I have to say, I never thought I'd talk about God's genitalia. <laughs> in fact, we won't be doing it. Yeah. What we'll be doing is asking the question, is the Church of England saying that it's going to make God gender neutral? Is it true or false? True. It's true. It is it's absolutely true. Five points. <laughs> now, now, this is the moment in the show when we talk about the prize this week. Last, last week was an amazing prize. It was a house in Detroit, uh, which, was, <laughs> uh, which cost me £300. Genuinely, it did cost me £300, but unfortunately, there was $20,000 in back taxes, so <laughs> nobody actually accepted it. This week, and it's coming up on the screen now, we've got a lovely caravan that I bought for £10 on eBay. The only problem with it is you have to collect it in Inverness and you're going to need a <laughs> lorry, which is probably going to cost a minimum of £5,000. And it's also derelict. They've had a bed bugs problem, which is why they discounted it <laughs> so significantly. So whichever of you wins the competition today gets to go to Inverness for the bed bug caravan. How exciting. Right. Fingers Absolutely. crossed. Absolutely. <laughs> Nothing like a holiday in Inverness with an infested dump. Oh. OK. Uh, so now to Anna and to Lacey. Luton has been named as the worst place in Britain <laughs> to live. Is it true or false? I'm not surprised. On that list was also Slough. Yeah. Um, Slough's yeah. great. I love Slough. Slough. Peter's, Peterborough, that was on there. I quite like Peterborough, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. No, that's, I've got to give you the big advantage of Slough, and it's called Nihari. It's a type of Pakistani curry, which is very hard to get in other places. <laughs> right. I, I, I hoover it up on a very regular basis. Very you good. know, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised there wasn't much, you know, any more, like, backlash about it on social media, because it reminds me, back in conference, uh, kind of back in October, um, a young Conservative tweeted, oh, no, Birmingham yeah. is a dump, and then everyone came after it. I think he was only, like, 20, 21, and he was coming into Birmingham, and and literally everyone they're came going, to show, you know, patriotism to They're all going, Birmingham. oh, that bull ring's fantastic. How can you complain <laughs> about that? It's lovely and the accent in Birmingham's great as well. Largely, they're just places where uh, migrant communities gravitate towards yeah. to, aren't mm -hmm. they? They're also places of rapid decline. Yeah. Like, when you walk down the high street in some of these places, even in areas here in London now, it's just boarded-up shops or the charity shops, and it just feels depressing. Mm. And, like, a big problem is that then that when that happens, crime comes into the area, mm. and then people just don't feel safe. And I you think always, that was what they were saying always, in Luton. You always know an area's going down when it's got a double-fronted chicken cottage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's always the moment. When, so I remember when I, when I went to school in Liverpool, where you walked down one the main drags, I forget the name of the street, mm. and, like, the biggest shop was a kebab shop, <laughs> and you think, something's gone badly wrong. I ask, well, what are the councils doing? Mm. What are they trying to bring an investment? Are they trying to set up something? What, what are they actually are they doing? doing Rainbow police. Cars? Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, I, I live, I live quite near Slough, so I'll, t I'll tell you what they do. Basically, these these Labour councils just sit there going, "This place is beyond redemption. We can't yeah. do anything about it. It's not our fault." Whereas, actually, I think in the case of Slough. And, and I can talk about Luton a little bit. Slough has Europe's biggest trading estate. Mm. What is it? A third of all the FTSE 250 have got a presence there. It's 13 minutes from London on the train. It's right next to Windsor. There's no reason for it to be in a bad situation. Yeah. Mm. Luton, yeah. in the aviation industry, is a major player. Yeah. There's no reason for these places to be bad, yeah. apart from mm. laziness from the government. Yeah, yeah. yeah agreed. Well done. Yeah. 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 yeah.
Anyway, <laughs> Luton then. Is it, uh, has it been named one of the worst places in Britain to live? Uh, yes, yeah, definitely. true. That is absolutely and unfairly true. <laughs> 66 points. You a big Sam Smith fan? He's all right, yeah. Uh, he's got your gear on, hasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mine cost a lot more than his. Did it? Well, he's a good London boy, Sam Smith. We like him. He's not a London boy, that's the problem. He's a London they. They? They oh, and them. Oh, yes, of course, yeah. he's a London... Whatever, whatever it is, yeah. Fluid. Now, do you think we should be calling... Fi oh, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. You're going to have to go. You're going to have to go. Oh, he's clocking. He's, that was on the clock. They've paid for that. They've paid for that. I'm not cheeking it. Now, I've got to be honest with you. I think this outfit cost a bit less than Sam Smith's version. No, no way. Yours is better. But if Sam Smith sw swam the ocean, the Japanese would harpoon him. Ooh, some harpoon with that outfit. <laughs> do you want to feel me? Go on, touch, touch me. Don't thump. Feel, touch. Touch them. That's a reference to me, then. OK, OK. Sam Smith has said that he should be known as they and them rather than he. Uh, do you think that that's sensible? No, not really. Because we go he, she and it, because these can be uh, a he or she. Yes. It's so it. So in, in, in Italian, there's lots of things that are he and she, but in English, it's only yeah. humans, isn't it, really, or yeah, animals? which is wrong, because this is masculine and uh, this is feminine. Well, well, this is going to be absolutely perfect for getting to the Grammys. Come on, oh, there we go. Quello è il lavoro che era fratelli, fate bene! Hey, hey, hey. Oh, 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 don't pop oh, yeah. me! That was the woke that was continued after the break. Welcome back to That Was the Woke That Was. Following the Chinese spy balloon, the US has shot down three UFOs in total in the past couple of weeks. Mm. Now, this is just such an interesting story that's developing by the day, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is a bit frightening. I reckon the reason that, that the Americans didn't move very fast to start with is that Joe Biden thought it was a dream. <laughs> yeah. going, oh, balloons flying with spies in them. No, that can't be real. Yeah. That can't be real. Well, it, it gets me that they uh, released a statement saying, like, they shot something down, but they didn't know what they shot down. Oh, but right. I was like, how do you not know what you shot yeah. down? The problem was they, they shot down Sam Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was floating no, over. It's, it's the house from up. <laughs> the, only, the, the risk with Sam Smith, if he ever goes swimming, the Japanese will harpoon yeah. him. <laughs> uh, but uh, I saw Rishi Sunak uh, the other day. He said um, the RAF um, Rapid Alert Force, which is the ones that are on 24-7 standby, are ready to shoot down if anything happens over the UK. Um, which I was like, well, given the state of our RAF, there's probably not enough pilots. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got a friend who's a Member of Parliament who received a letter from a constituent which said, the other day, in, in its home in Lancashire, I believed I saw a Russian spy plane flying over, taking photos. How would you and my mate thought, this guy's nuts, mm. right? So forwarded it to the Ministry for, of, of Defence and they said, yes, indeed, you did see a Russian spy plane. What? As part of our non-proliferation agreements, they fly over us every now and again and we fly <laughs> over <laughs> yeah. them. Over <laughs> it's like, how, how is that story actually yeah. true? But how did I, that guy know? He just looked at the, with yeah. his bare eyes yeah. and yeah. Yeah. definitely a Russian spy yeah. plane. I reckon what I, I reckon I lied in anywhere. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I I reckon, on further reflection, that must be lies. Yeah. <laughs> he must have known it was going on and thought, I'm just going to write this letter. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we do get those stories, don't, don't we, where, um, like, Russian jets kind of enter a, U, a UK airspace mm. and, they, they, you know, we have to send the typhoons up. And then, apparently, we do the... We do the it's just testing each other. Mm. Um, we do get them quite a lot. So they I do, love it. And whenever there is one of those stories, everybody freaks out massively. They're like, no, no, this happens but all they do, the time. But they, do, but they do have a significant problem at Southampton Airport because, obviously, the English Channel, mm. um, you know, you're allowed to fly down there. Mm. And they, we request that any foreign military jets say that they're going to yeah. be there, but the Russians do start flying past, and people on their easy jet flight to Malaga, <laughs> I will tell you, those toilets have never been so regularly used. <laughs> it's a little God. shocking. Oh, OK, God. so, um, following the Chinese spy balloon, mm -hmm. uh, the US has shot down three more UFOs. Now, I think, 
I think whichever answer you're going to give me, I think could be right. Yeah. Well, I, I, was, I thought you were going to say give us minus yeah. points. There. I was like, no, we're not that keen. <laughs> um, well, true. presently, at, at time of recording, true. <laughs> yes. It's absolutely true. 66.5 points. Hit Me Baby One More Time by Britney Spears has been banned by the BBC after yeah. a young listener complained it promoted domestic abuse. So this is one of the ones where I don't think it's true, but I think by next week it okay. will be yeah. true. <laughs> Someone will at some point I will come tell out you, Ben, this. we've had a terrible problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think where literally the, the producer writes these questions to be ludicrous and the following yeah. week we have to come back and concede <laughs> yeah. it actually happened. We should, <laughs> we should really call this show, like, Nostradamus. <laughs> <laughs> That was the um, wake that will be. Oh, it's like it's like a seance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but again, this just goes back. The, the problem is these stories become so ridiculous because our culture is now all about banning. Mm. And like, and you just hear it as there's a one after another, after another, after another. So you don't really know whether these ones are true or not. Yeah, I feel like it, I don't think it's true, but it will be by the time it goes out, or yeah. at least at some point, every single song. It's just a long yeah. list that they're going after, one by one, till we have no songs left, no books left, nothing left. We all sit around in a grey room going, well, is this is this racist somehow? Yeah. Because the room isn't the, <laughs> multicoloured. I, mean, I, yeah. I find the whole, the whole concept extraordinary for the following reason. If you think about it, the reason that humanity has been so successful mm. is we have communication skills, which means that every generation is more enlightened than the previous yeah. one. So what that means is, if you look at people 300 years ago, they are going to be backward. Doesn't make them stupid, no. doesn't make them evil. It just, it's just an inevitable consequence of human progress. And you sat there going, oh, and this statue from 300 years ago, he, said, he made some off-colour remarks. Oh, come on, pal. I mean, if you think about it, Saladin is the most famous Islamic leader and was considered a great man in the Middle Ages because when he invaded Jerusalem, rather than killing everyone, he sold them all into slavery. But that was a step forward at the yeah. time. Now, you don't turn around and go, Saladin was a slave master, mm. do you? I mean, that would yeah. be pathetic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. There's change and progression, but it takes time. And that's where you have points like this, where people are just push pushing an agenda too fast, too quickly, in a yeah. place where it doesn't necessarily belong. But talking about slaves, you know, when it, everyone brings up that George Washington had slaves, it's like, oh, come on, get over yourself. It's, it's yeah. silly points yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I tell you what, I tell you what, like what I question. find very offensive, very bad about slavery. Look, we can all complain about what took place in Virginia and America all those years ago, forgetting that, of course, that this was the first, we were the first major country mm. to ban slavery. Nobody seems to care about the level of slavery at the Qatar World Cup. Yeah. So, we're, so we're all worried about something that happened 200 years ago, but not so worried about what's I, going I on literally now. I think it's deliberate. It's Absolutely. because you can avoid dealing with the problems you yeah. actually have to deal with yeah. today if you constantly focus on the past. You can shut your eyes to it and go, we're yes. really virtual about actually having to do anything. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, look. That's <laughs> half my time. <laughs> what was that? Was, was that? That's my Britney Spears That's impersonation. Not Britney Spears. <laughs> You've got no costume for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's was what it, she sounds was it, like. Was That's it, what she well, sounds like. Well, now I want it banned. I know, yeah. Please ban that song. Was it, wasn't it Britney Spears that, you know, everyone, when they were kids, they used to get the straw and put it, like, behind their ears? It looks like they had, like, a microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what passed for fun in Wigan. It's like, go, Dad, Dad. I, I've, can I have some toys this Christmas? No, lad. We all, we've, we've, all, we've only just recobbled the streets <laughs> and those gas lamps yeah. have cost a fortune. What you can do is you can have a straw and pretend to be Britney Spears. But even and Barnes is out going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> that, But now plastic straws are banned. You can't I know, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. There goes your childhood. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> the, only, the only respite that children of Wigan ever had, <laughs> which was a plastic oh. straw trick. As, uh, I'll tell you something. I love the way that your mum and dad hate the fact I insult Wigan. <laughs> and I, like, now you've told me that, I'm doing it even more every single week. Yeah. Hit me, baby, one more time. Has it been banned for promoting domestic mm, abuse? No, know. not yet, but it will be. Yeah. It is absolutely false! <laughs> Minus 356 points. We're going backwards. OK, so, to Anna and to Lacey. OK, uh, Shakespeare's Globe has slapped a trigger warning on Midsummer Night's Dream, claiming it contains misogyny and racism. <sighs> you just wonder what's next. It's like, you, everyone knows the story, Midsummer Night's Dream, most people. So it's like, why would you... No, no, <laughs> no. don't know. OK, <laughs> just you then. Do you know what? Do you know, I, I've always thought that Shakespeare was so good at school because he didn't have to study Shakespeare. <laughs> 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 but, therefore, he was engaged with the career. I like that. I like that. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, my God, what's, what's William going to do? He's going to force every school child in the country to leave thou ass rubbish or whatever it is. I'm not interested. I can imagine they'll make a lot of actors and artists and um, anyone involved in the performance 
performing arts really nervous because this is something that you study in school like all like everyone that I remember when I you know do GCSEs this was something that I studied this is performed in schools and then it, this is I think a lot of people sort of look in the past and try and find something to cause offense or whip up a stir and it's just going to keep happening but don't go watch them but, but, but I'm not being funny but if you took me kicking and screaming to Shakespeare's Globe, <laughs> and they put on the most offensive, racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic thing. I still wouldn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but they could, be, they could be literally saying anything. So, with, with Shakespeare, why are you going for Midsummer Night's Dream? Of all the plays, yeah. you've got, oh, so yeah. you've got Macbeth, which is about murdering the king. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Romeo and Juliet, which is about a teenage suicide Merchant pact. Venice. Merchant of Venice, which is, which yeah, very anti The it's funniest fair. one. It's fair to say the treatment of Shylock was, <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. was not great, was it? Not well, the, the, the Globe have got form on this because they have, like, they have this policy where they want to decolonize Shakespeare oh. as well, which I just think is pathetic. But mm. um, they've got the, like these kind of seminars after the performances yeah. where they talk about the, the the contentious themes in it. I was just like, how boring of a person do you have yeah. to be? But yeah. that is what you want to go. If and it do. wasn't boring enough already, yeah. you've got to let yeah. yeah. that's, right. that's right. Oh come on, mate! How much longer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love the way the Globe literally advertises that you can leave halfway through. <laughs> 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 well, can, you imagine, can you imagine like yeah. selling a Hollywood blockbuster film? <laughs> going, yeah. The big advantage of this is that you can leave at any point. No. I mean, I, I love the Bard. I love Shakespeare. Do you? Yeah, absolutely. You I've, don't see, I've seen Romeo and Juliet <laughs> countless times. I used to be able to quote it. Go on, don't she is no. literally doing what everyone does. Just say that on the telly. Yeah. Yeah. On the telly. I, I don't want to admit that what I actually like is naked attraction. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll play. I'll play. Oh, what time is it? Excellent. Oh, let's watch. Let's no, watch. I love Shakespeare. People, people accuse Shakespeare of being discriminatory because he said that Richard III had a bad back, yeah. but he did actually. He did, but yeah. yeah. But I was just thinking about my thing, Shakespeare. Romeo and Juliet, and that's about a 13 year old girl and a 16 year old boy, and child, well, teen suicide, isn't yeah. it? So, yeah. I mean, there's, there's countless examples where this okay. could be the case. Okay. Of course We've got to come up with the three best things about Shakespeare. I think the best, number one, was I've never had to read it since, oh. right? which I think is the number one advantage of Shakespeare. Number two is probably it keeps pretentious people out of the pub because oh, right? they're, yeah. they're too busy dealing with it. Yeah. And point number three, um, well, I didn't need a third, because the first two were so good. <laughs> well, he's dead, so he's not writing anymore. Yeah, so. he's not writing anymore. <laughs> he's not writing Absolutely. Anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. He's stuck. Knock it off, he's son. Done. <laughs> Knock Sorted. it off. Knock it off. <laughs> Shakespeare's Globe has been slapped with a trigger warning uh, on Midsummer Night's Dream, claiming it contains misogyny and racism. Is it true or false? Yeah, so I definitely think it's true. Yeah. It's absolutely true! <laughs> but it has to be said. My mum and dad went to a performance of Macbeth that was uh, set in modern-day Africa oh. in Zimbabwe, and they said it was excellent. Yeah, so like, you can actually get some decent performances. Like... No, you can't. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> that was The Woke That Was, continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. So, John Cleese has announced he's bringing back Faulty Towers. In the new series, Basil Fawlty will rent out all of his rooms to migrants. <laughs> I think it would actually be a really good show. Yeah. If, if they did do that, that would be a very good comedy skit. But um, I don't think they would because it just isn't, you know, it would never get commissioned, basically. No commission against us is going to go, yeah, do that. Yeah. Fawlty <laughs> Migrant is, Hotel. Who is... Not even the people who smoke the Markle Spark. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's a great idea. Yeah. I think it would be funny I, to watch. I do know they are bringing Fawlty Towers back, yes. though. Oh, I, have, I have read this because mm -hmm. uh, John Cleese has been been like all over the newspapers, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, I don't can't remember which uh, production companies picked this up, but I know he said it's not the BBC. Mm. <laughs> like he's like fundamentally put his foot down and said the BBC is not to show any old episodes. It's not getting any of the new ones. He's having nothing to do with it. Like I this has become somewhat of a absolutely. two fingers up to the I love BBC. That, I love that. And the new episode of Fault Towers. Come here, you little Spanish racial stereotype. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me just smack you. There yeah. we go. And that's what I found so interesting about this. Why the timing is right? Yeah. Now, why I, now? I, I don't know how much of this is true. And if it is yeah. about migrants, that terrifies me. Yeah. Because John Cleese is, is such an individual. But obviously now Andrew Sachs has died, Connie Booth has died, mm. Priscilla Scales. I just find it a fascinating time that it's he's... funny, right? Can we just stop there? How do, how do you know the names of the entire <laughs> Everybody knows I grew them. up watching it. I, I love it. Oh, by the way, apparently the Scales one's alive. 
OK, fantastic. Oh. Good. But I don't, I don't think she's involved with it. And that's why I think the timing's quite peculiar. I know he's writing um, it with his daughter, though. Mm. I know that she's involved. Oh, I've seen this before. Like, why's that boy band got back together? I call it yeah. Felicity Wants a Pony Tour. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, how much? How much are these private yeah. school? Linda, have you seen these private school fees? Come on, let's get the old band back together. Do think we'll do a, a stadium tour. It's a cash cow. They're trying to squeeze as much money out of it as yeah. they can. Mm. And like anything, when they revive an old classic, they ruin it. It's yeah, never I as good as the original. But wouldn't, but, but wouldn't you do it anyway, though? Because you sat there thinking, sat there thinking, what I could do is get my daughter, who may or may not be a good writer, but I'll yeah. make about 10 million quid done, you know. Well, I, the thing mm. I'm quite fearful of is obviously John Cleese was such a sprightly, active character. His whole thing was slapstick yeah. comedy, running around after Manuel. And now I'm... Oh, God, how old is he now? Oof. He's got to be in it'll his be like, 80s. It'll be like Steptoe and Son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm concerned about what he's going to be able to do. Or what, yeah. you do what you could do is you could just, like... You remember what they used to do with Brezhnev in the 80s? Just rod his back and wheel him out. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be all right. He's oh. still alive. Well, they worry. do that with Biden now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not funny. We're ridiculing the Soviet, Soviet Union for rodding the back of leaders and we've got <laughs> we Biden. We're <laughs> <are> currently <laughs> doing it. Yeah. OK, so... Has John Cleese announced that he's going to bring back Faulty Towers, but critically, mm. by uh, a hotel with migrants in it? No, they wouldn't get away that. with that. I don't that. think they could get away with that. So we say false. Oh. That is absolutely false! <laughs> 35 points. OK. The Welsh Parliament has been accused of wasting public money after putting women's sanitary products in the men's toilets. Mm. The tampons are for the benefit of transgender staff. Is it true or false? You know, I wouldn't be surprised at all if this is true. And I think this um, this is happening a lot more. I, the, um, I wrote about this in The Critic with um, this um, TikToker said that she... So this is a biological man identifying as a woman, saying that he was having period pains. And then he got his girlfriend, who's also a biological man, to film him having these period pains in his room, putting it on social media. And there was a lot of backlash because people who genuinely have periods and have really struggled with them, have had to have surgery and such, you know, that, that was really offensive to them because that's something that they've really had to struggle with. And here's a man pretending to have these huge, big period cramps. And I think as well, there's a question about safety as well. I do, I do worry. I do worry. I mean, when I was at university, um, you know, we, we weren't big on this sort of identity politics, yeah. but clearly there are issues that are unique to women, whether, yeah. that be, whether that be safety at night, whether that be health, whether that be pregnancy or whatever. And this whole idea of just blurring the boundaries, it worries me yeah. that actually you lose some of that protection yeah. that, that, that uniquely is required for women. Well, yeah, especially in women's toilets as well, and biological men being able to just freely use them, because there are many men that will take advantage of that, and then women who are at physical disadvantage would not be able to defend tell, themselves. I'll tell, I'll tell you one thing, though, like, one huge disadvantage of this. I used to own a restaurant. I can guarantee you no restaurateur or pub owner in this country uses the gents when the place is closed, mm. because yeah. they they absolutely yeah. reek. Blokes are like dogs. They just mark their territory, <laughs> don't they? I mean, I also, I went to the... Um, this was, like, back in the summer. Um, I went to this nightclub with a few friends, and we re when we went to, we realised it was, like, a dra kind of drag queen-themed, um, like, LGBT night, and there was, like, a gender-neutral toilet. Yeah. And then there was a, literally just men, like, all dressed in drag, or just, like, normal men, just, like, literally just walking in. And, like, we felt unsafe, especially because, there's you know, they've been drinking quite a yes. lot, and yeah, they can take yeah. advantage of you when you're in that space, uh, especially if you're, like, going on your own and such, and you shouldn't have to feel like you can go to the toilet and have to look out for your safety. You just, you know, mm. want to I've got, I've got, I've got to tell you, a very good friend of mine was telling me about, about shared toilets. She was mm. saying that mm. her and her female friends often go into a cubicle together. And she said, I went into a cubicle <laughs> once in a nightclub with my mates, and she said, I was just out, you know, having a cigarette or whatever, when that was allowed to be done. Do not follow that example. <laughs> um, and her mate had a poo. Wow. Ooh, That's not exactly. You know, a lot of women do that. Going yeah. No. Together. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. Would you do that? <laughs> I wouldn't, but I have been in... Yeah, in many circumstances where that's happened. <laughs> they still follow you in. Yeah. I think Audrey's just dressed up women I'm, 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 not, I'm not being funny, but women have a go at men for being disgusting. Can you imagine watching your friends? <laughs> oh, I mean, it's, I know. Not, it's not acceptable. <laughs> well, I mean, so, funny you bring up shared toilets, because I've been to the Welsh Parliament a couple of times, and they have... Why? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Uh, I don't know, it's a bathroom. kind of cultural exchange thing, but um, they have gender-neutral toilets anyway. Mm. So I'm trying to understand what the point of this 
kind of story is, mm. other than it's just a small little thing on a bigger track. Mm. So, because I know that Mark Drakeford wants to have a kind of gender recognition bill like Nicola Sturgeon's trying yeah, to get Yeah, because it went through. so well for Nicola yeah, Sturgeon. Exactly. <laughs> that yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, he's desperate to get this kind of similar legislation. He's trying to... He's going up against Westminster now. And it's going to be the, the next big fight in the Welsh Parliament. Mm. And I think this is one of those things where people think, oh, it's just a small little thing, who cares? But yeah. I've often found with these groups, give them one thing, give them another, give them another. And by the end of it, you've already got so much that you can't yeah. turn the boat around, as you it know, were. It's, it's <laughs> funny that you mention universities, because at our main campus in Westminster, we are the, the most accessible toilets was a male only and a male and female. There wasn't a female only. That's mm. And that was disgusting. Yeah, that was only a few years yeah. ago. Um, but I think with this story in particular, I, I'd probably take a bit of a different stance, purely because it's just something that's kind of happening somewhat under the radar. It's there if you want it. Let's not make a big hullabaloo. Let's move on. I think the more people that can have accessibility to yeah. sanitary products, I think that's great. Yeah, um, period, uh, period In a poverty, male toilet, though. What, yeah, the, why think, are you putting tampons in a male toilet? Right, let's not get into the granular idea. detail. <laughs> let's not get into the granular <laughs> detail. I'd rather not know. Because, because uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to assume it's a waste of money and nobody's using them. Yeah. Because the other option is not ideal yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. But OK, look, um, has the Welsh Parliament been accused of wasting taxpayers' money over this issue, which is putting tampons in the yeah. mail? Toilet? I mean, it's a big virtue signalling stance, and I think it's absolutely true. Yeah. 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 It is unbelievably true! <laughs> OK. So both of you are now even on 15 points. <laughs> The Food Standards Agency has said that bringing cakes to the office encourages people to eat sugar and should be banned because that's as bad as passive smoking. I've been out and about asking people whether cakes should be banned from the office. Do you believe that it's bad to take cakes into the office? Uh, yeah. Why? Because it, it helps people to eat more. Uh, sweet things and they put on weight and they... Hey, why are you looking at me when you say put on weight? Well, you know. <laughs> I've never really been into eating cakes and I was working in, a, in an office and there was definitely social pressure. The Food Standards Agency has said that people shouldn't bring cakes into the office on the grounds that they're unhealthy. Do you think cakes are a bad thing? No. Why not? Do you want one? You're, you're dead right, I do, yeah. Right, what flavour do you want? Oh, well, no, I'm just, what we're doing here, um... If you eat just a small piece of cake, it does you wonders, and we have fruit filling in a lot of our cakes as well, in the centre of it, so it's delicious, and it's not too much at a time. Do you think it's right that the Food Standards Agency wants to ban cake from offices? No. Why? <laughs> because people have a free will. I think they're very nice cakes. Do you want one? Yes, please. Go for it. Just the one. OK, well, I wasn't offering you two. What if they say that you are, you do feel a social pressure to eat them? Then you're mad. Give me the can, I'll tell you. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Oh, can I have a sup of your can? Look you, Oh, fantastic. Cheers, mate. Mm. Oh, I've not had special brew in ages. Would you like a bite of my cake? No, thank Why you. Why not? It's tasty. Because your mouth is maybe dirty. <laughs> Where do you think my mouth's been? Uh, you know where. On my face, that's all. <laughs> it's done nothing in my mouth. Let me see your eyes. Oh, my God, you've done so many bad things today. <laughs> <laughs> Just a small <laughs> Hello, would you like some cake? Yes. <laughs> bite, bite my cake. Bite my cake. Oh, there we go. We've lost it. Bit, bit more. Bit more. What's in it? Bit more. It's nothing's in it. It's fine. It's good. Do you not like it? It's all right. It's not bad, that is it? Delicious. Thank you very much. Have a bit. Okay. Okay. O open the mouth. Uh, uh, yeah, go on. Oh, there we go. Well done. Oh, mm. oh. It's all right, that, isn't it? Yeah, very, very strange, very interesting. Mm. Very nice, thank you very much. Thank you. I've got cake on my face, look at look at that. Can you can you get it off? I didn't see it. Can you just get it off? Get it off, just get it off. Oh, come on, just lick it off, it'll be all right. Lick it off? <laughs> oh, now you've, you've crossed the boundary now. <laughs> okay. really, if there was a bit of a tissue, I might, it, it thing, but, but no. Well, I think it's fair to say that the good people of Ealing do not want cake banned in the office. And as they say in these parts, you can take our cake, but you cannot take our freedom! What's 
in it. It's nothing's in it. It's fine. It's good. Do you not like it? Oh, there we go. Well done. Very fun. Very interesting. Oh my God! You've done so many bad things today. That was the woke that was. Continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. Pubs may be forced to hire banter bouncers to stop drunken conversations <laughs> which may offend staff. Oh. A new law has been introduced which allows barmaids to sue punters if they are offended. Now, I will say, as somebody who has a hearing problem and cannot speak quietly and cannot say anything that is not offensive to someone, mm. this is something that terrifies yeah. me, yeah. Yeah. genuinely, because yeah. I, mean... I would spend my life... There is nobody here that can ever go back into a pub. Yeah. <laughs> no, also, I mean, I can't go back into most of them anyway. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, we're the... going to have to find a new hobby. <laughs> what's, the, what's, the point, what's the point in a pub? That's the whole point, is to go yeah. and have, have a laugh, have a bit of bands, have a few yeah. drinks. And if you start making them boring places where you yeah. can't say anything, it's just like, where can you? But there is there is kind of, sort of, precedence for this. Because remember the, the ban on smoking in yeah. pubs? Mm. The reason they banned it in private members' clubs was because of the staff. Because the private yeah. members' clubs said, well, we have smoking rooms that are separate, mm -hmm. and they said it's an issue of the staff, nah. and so the staff are offended. I mean, I've got to be honest with you. I think that, you know, we don't want staff to be uh, kind of abused, but I think walking past and hearing a bit of swearing. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I, I think this is the problem. I, I have it every time we have one of these stories is the problem of the word abuse. Mm. What, do, what do we really mean by that? Because, yeah, you know, are we talking, like, straight-up racism or are we talking somebody's dropping the F-bomb too many times? Yeah. Like, the, it, there's too, too much kind of wiggle room in also, the language. It's redundant because you already have a landlord. If someone's crossing yeah. the line and going too far, they get kicked out, they get oh, barred. Yeah. Someone's already doing that job and yeah. that's for the landlord to decide. Yeah, and I, and I think there's also a critical difference between something that I might be saying to you in the pub. Mm. I mean, I mean, look, I've never been polite to Barnes for a whole <laughs> evening, right? But, but then again... Yeah, it's because <laughs> he, he's from Wigan. Because yeah. they took over my town in 1974. Yeah. That's the issue, you know. That's the issue. Yeah. Lee used to be a real place. It's just a bus stop now. Yeah, it is just a bus stop. <laughs> it is just a bus stop. <laughs> but, but, you know, if you're, if you're being abusive to someone mm -hmm. um, who's a member of staff, I think that's very different yeah, to them overhearing banned. something. That's yeah. already dealt with. It doesn't need anyone else. But there's a yeah. pub in Belfast where if you go and you order a drink that's not alcoholic, the landlord will tell you in quite, you know, words I can't repeat on here uh, to basically leave his pub. The most ridiculous and most heinous things I've ever heard in my life have happened in the pub and they've come from your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what from I'm, I'm, not, I'm not joking, maybe I shouldn't admit this, but the producers of this show have told me that when I come into this building, I'm not allowed to say anything to anyone <laughs> at all <laughs> for fear of offending them. <laughs> Basically, first they, they emailed me a list of things I wasn't allowed to say in the studio and then they just said, just don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> they said, literally, even just, you're just a walking yeah, hate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. this is to decide the winners and remember you get that lovely <laughs> caravan which has got a bit of an infestation problem and you will need to get it from Inverness. But this is the point, deciding point. Pubs may be forced to hire banter bouncers. Is it true or false? Well, I, I think it's true, but I don't want the caravan. Yeah, so, I don't want the caravan. Should we say false? <laughs> yeah, should we just throw the We know it's true, but should we do, are we allowed to do that? Mm -hmm. False. Yeah. <laughs> it is out. absolutely true! That means you win the caravan. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Now, there is... There, there is a bill from rent kill uh, that, that is, that is 849 99 yeah. oh, So we will, we'll send that bill to you. Anyway, I'm off now to win a competition to look like the biggest Henry VIII in Britain. Until next time, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>